Hi everyone, welcome to Smart Math Online Tutor. Through this video, we are going to see the midpoint theorem. Simply, midpoint theorem states that the straight line joining the midpoints of the two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and equal to half of it. That is, in the triangle ABC, P is the midpoint of AB and Q is the midpoint of AC. Then, according to the midpoint theorem, PQ is parallel to BC and PQ is equal to half of BC2. Now look at this example. ABC is a triangle. D and E are midpoints of the sides AB and AC respectively. We need to find the value of Y. By the midpoint theorem, we can state DE is parallel to BC and DE is equal to half of BC. Therefore, DE is equal to half of 18 centimeters and then Y is equal to 9 centimeters. Let's turn into another example. PQR is a triangle. L and M are midpoints of PQ and PR. We must prove the area of the quadrilateral LQRM is 3 fourth the area of triangle PQR. By midpoint theorem, we can state LM is parallel to QR and LM is half of QR. So, let's take LM is equal to X. Then, QR will become 2X since LM is half of QR. To find the areas, we need the perpendicular heights as well. We can see PQ is perpendicular to QR. So, let's take PL and LQ is equal to Y. Now, let's derive the areas. Area of LQRM quadrilateral first. It is a trapezium. Area of a trapezium is equal to half into the sum of parallel sides into the height. That is half into x plus 2x into y that is equal to 3xy over 2. Now let's see the area of the triangle PQR. That is half into base into height. It is equal to half into 2x into 2y which gives 2xy. Since we need to relate the areas, I divide the area of the quadrilateral LQRM by the area of the triangle PQR. Then I get 3xy over 2 divided by 2xy and the answer becomes 3 over 4. Now I cross multiply to get area of LQRM equals 3 fourth the area of triangle PQR. The midpoint theorem also has a converse. Now let's see into the converse. The straight line through the midpoint of one side of a triangle and parallel to another side bisects the third side. That is, if x is the midpoint of PQ and if xy is parallel to QR, then y becomes the midpoint of PR. So it gives us PY is equal to YR since Y is the midpoint. Look at this example. ABC is a triangle where L is the midpoint of AB and AB is parallel to MN. Also, LM is parallel to BN. First of all, we need to find the length of MC. If you see carefully, L is the midpoint of AB and LM is parallel to BN. According to the converse of midpoint theorem, M is the midpoint of AC. Therefore, MC is equal to AM and then we can find out MC is equal to 7 cm since AM is equal to 7 cm. The next part, we are going to prove LMNB is a rhombus. We must recall that in a rhombus, opposite sides are parallel and adjacent sides are equal. In this diagram, it is given that opposite sides are parallel. What we need to show is that adjacent sides are equal. Let's start. L is the midpoint of AB and M is the midpoint of AC. 
Therefore, we can say LM is half of BC according to the midpoint theorem. So then we can show LM is equal to 5 centimeters. M is the midpoint of AC and MN is parallel to AB. Therefore, again, by the converse of the midpoint theorem, we can say N is the midpoint of BC. Since BC is equal to 10 centimeters, BN will become 5 centimeters. Now we have showed BN is equal to 5 centimeters and MN is also equal to 5 centimeters. So it is the adjacent sides are equal. And already it is given that BN is parallel to ML and LB is parallel to MN. So we can say LMNB is a rhombus. Hope I made myself clear with the midpoint theorem, the converse and its application. See you with another smart math clip. Until then, goodbye.